NBA All-Star, Fred Van Vliet. How does that sound? Uh, sounds good to me. I like, I'm getting used to it. It's taking some getting used to, but um, you know, it just doesn't seem real. You know, I was like, should I ask the cliche question of, did you ever see this for yourself? Did you ever claim that you would be here? But I feel like that's silly because you bet on yourself every single yes. time. Was this part of the vision? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you put things on a wall and you throw darts and sometimes, you know, you, you hit and sometimes you don't. Um, it became realistic, you know, in the last two years probably for me as I started to see like how you could get there and a pathway to get there as I started to play more. But um, just, you know, I always think back to like my dreams as a kid and, you know, where I was looking up without knowing anything is definitely something I always wanted to do. I've watched every All-Star game my entire life, so uh, it's, a, it's a big deal for me. You know, when you think about your career, uh, you know, where you had come up from, NBA championship, you then have a son, you hit flow. There's certain parts where you just sort of hit flow. Can you explain what clicks for you at certain times where you can kind of just get into a zone? It just feels like things just come so easy to you, just like this year has. has. Uh, I think it's just staying in the moment and just, um, you know, being able to uh, maintain whatever zone that is. So, you know, try to extend that as long as possible. I think just in my life, I always try to take advantage of opportunities when they arise. So uh, just being prepared, obviously, which comes from, you know, all the work and stuff that I put in. But uh, just having a mental focus to not get too high or too low. So when it's going good, I'm not like overly excited. And when it's bad, I can snap out of it. And, um, you know, that, that allows me to kind of maintain those runs where you'll see me play, you know, in a certain space for a long period of time. Was there something that you changed or adjusted this past summer that has allowed you to find so much success on the court? Uh, changed. Um, I think I just started focusing on creating more and just, uh, you know, I was really, uh, my play was kind of directed off of my role as I came into the NBA trying to make a team and then uh, you know, the last guy on the roster and then a bench player and then a six man and then a starter. And now this is my first time being able to just go out there and just play free and be able to create and kind of do whatever I want to. So that, that took some adjusting to, uh, in my skill work and my development. But um, yeah, just having fun and having the ultimate green light and freedom to, to be who I want to be out there. And I think that's interesting you say that because I wonder mentally, what does the mindset change look like when you are kind of following a franchise way of mold and now you get to lay out your own blueprint as a player, as a leader in this franchise? Um, it's just like, you know, having rules as, <laughs> you know, we all have to follow rules at sometimes and then sometimes those rules go away and now you're in position of uh, a power and having responsibility, you know, and you still got to uphold, you know, certain standards. But at the same time, I think, you know, you got to earn that. And I think that I paid my dues and, and, and waited it out. And I was, you know, a good soldier and, I, you know, I, I played my role and now my role is expanded. And um, I'm just trying to take advantage of that opportunity. You win a championship, you secure the bag, generational wealth for yourself, your family. Now you're an NBA All-Star. Where does this rank? Um. I don't even really rank it, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. Kayla. Like, I don't. I just, I'm just enjoying it. I'm trying to, like, live in the moment and um, really appreciate everything that's that's happening for me. Um, like, I really have no complaints, you know what I mean? And I have bad days just like anybody else. Does. I got real stuff going on in my life that people don't see. You know, you see the highlights. But at the end of the day, I'm just enjoying, you know, the process. and. This is everything I ever wanted, and I'm taking what come with that, good and bad, and just uh, you know, staying grateful and staying humbled and, and trying to stay grounded. That allows me to just keep keep going. Bet on yourself. We got to pay your agent, your former agent, <laughs> all the money in the world for giving you that. Can you just walk me back how that saying clicked and how you kind of took that on as kind of your mantra on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I think... The way he said it, you know, it just was so smooth and simple. And I don't know if he knew what he was saying or I even knew what it meant, but like, that's who I was before he even said it. Like, that's my whole life. I've always been that kid. And that's just from being the youngest, you know, being one of the little kids, playing with the older kids. I've had, always had to have that confidence and that swagger and just, you know, taking a chance and being a gambler and, you know, being one of those guys that's going to take a shot. I'm always just going to take a shot at things. and. Um, when he said it, it just, you know, it was like a, one of those movie moments where it just clicked and you know, I took that on and then it became, you know, its own thing as we see today, it's everywhere.
I mean, that unwavering confidence. You say that as a kid or someone coming up, people are looking at you like, bro, you sure? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> How nah. many people looked at you like you were wilding? Everybody, Yeah. everybody. Like I got, you know, I'm sure people talked about me. I definitely got a lot of side eyes and looks from the people closest to me, um, family. They just, they couldn't believe it or see it or, you know, they just questioned it. You know, when you don't know, nobody can really see what you feel. So. I was just, you know, I was carrying it like that from my childhood. Like I always felt like this was possible and this is something I could do. And, you know, it took time, but everybody sees it now, you know, obviously. And I never, I never really went off of what other people saw. Like those things affect you. You know, I have feelings of highs and lows. People don't believe in you. you, you feel a way about that, but it didn't change how I felt about myself. When people say bet, I think sometimes people get confused because they think it's a lot of luck that's mm -hmm. involved. This isn't all luck, this is mm -hmm. earned. Can you speak about the path to get to this point? Yeah, it definitely uh, took a lot to to go into that. And I, when I say bet, I'm not just saying just throw money you know, <laughs> at a wall or whatever, just make a stupid bet. No, I make the smart bet, you know, smart money. Put this, you know, and um, be prepared and uh, do everything in your power to give yourself the best opportunity. But at the end of the day, put the money on yourself, like mm -hmm. put the bet on yourself. Don't. Bet, worry about other people and, and what they got going on or what they think, you know, make the bet on yourself. And that's kind of where it came from. But uh, I don't say that without saying I put the work in and I do try to do everything the right way to get to this point. And everything coming to fruition. I feel like no one's had a better last week than you have. Uh, you're named All-Star, then you get engaged. I mean, there's so much coming up for you. You're about to, what, turn 28 yeah. at the end of the month? Yeah. <laughs> like, are you at a good place right now in your life? Yeah, February's been a good month for me. <laughs> it's been a good month. I always, I always just try to find ways to like stretch my birthday as long as possible because February is a short month. So having my birthday at the end of the year, All Star was at the beginning, end of the month, All Star was at the beginning. Throw the engagement in there. It's, it's, it's been a little a, light work, right? It's a little light work. Yeah, it's been, it's been a good month for me. For sure. Amazing to hear. Now, when you think about this franchise, the place that you found in it, I want to talk about the relationship that you had with Kyle and Demar, and just that special moment between you and Demar when you found out that you were an All Star. I don't think anyone could have written a better script. What was he saying to you on the court? Yeah, those are my big brothers, man. And um, you know, the first thing Demar said was that you know I told you. Cause he's been telling me, you know, for a long time of, you know, what I could do and what I was capable of. And he also was one of the first people to tell me that I was going to be an all-star this year. So um, just to like share that moment with him, um, obviously share the moment with my teammates, but to have him here, cause he saw me when I first came in, he saw me as my first impression into the NBA. So uh, having those two guys as mentors and as big brothers, like it's, it's priceless. It's something that I can never repay them for. And, I always just try to show my respect and appreciation for what they've done for me. And they know that, you know, whenever we play against each other, I'm always going at them. But there's just a love and appreciation there. And to finally see DeMar, in a way, get his flowers the way that he has deserved over the years, uh, what does that mean like for you to know the work that he's put in to get to this point? Man, it's, it's so inspiring. It's so inspiring to see, you know, him stick with it. And um, it's crazy to see him come out and speak about mental health and then go through what he went through the last couple of years being in San Antonio. Uh, me knowing him, you know, as a brother, like I know those weren't his best years and he wasn't, you know, uh, but you can see it now. You can see him. He's just playing with joy and happiness and playing free. And, um, you know, I'm just happy to see him get that just do because I've been I've been defending them for the last couple of years <laughs> uh, because I saw it every day for two years so um, just happy for him and to be playing at an MVP level right now as I think DeMar's 32 or something like that so it's inspiring to see that you can continue to get better in your later years. I mean talk about support one thing about Kyle Lowry is he's going to shout you out yeah, whatever sure. he can. Always. What's the biggest lesson that you learned from him when you both were teammates? Um, I think I just learned from Kyle uh, his professionalism and like how he plays the game and not just the basketball game but just the game of, of basketball and, and the business of basketball and coming to work every day and, and putting your work in and having a clean face and, and, and a clean face card and um, saying the right things and just he's an ultimate professional. Um, he works extremely hard. Uh, he's a great teammate 
and um, he plays even harder than all of that. So he's a pretty good basketball player <laughs> as well, but he's he's got a lot of other things going for him, and um, I just try to soak up as much knowledge from him as possible on a daily basis, and we were kind of, you know, attached at, at the hip for uh, many years. I mean, when you think about your leadership, you've been a part of so many winning teams through your collegiate career, 905, now winning the ring, of course, in 2019 with the Raptors. What is harder, realizing the dream of winning or knowing what that feels like and trying to repeat it again? Um, I'll probably say realizing the dream of winning because once you once you win it, like once we won a championship, the like those last the last few years have been way easier than the first couple of years. And I don't know if that's because of my trajectory of me being a younger player and turned into an older player. But um, once you know what it takes, it's a lot easier to get there. The hard part is taking guys that don't know what it takes and trying to teach them what it takes. But they have to learn just like we had to learn and I had to learn. And I've been a winning player my whole life, but I never won an NBA championship before. So going through that process, learning a lot about myself and learning about what it takes, I, I like to be in that position. I'll take that experience and try to, I would take the challenge of trying to share that versus like chasing it without knowing exactly what that means. What is the biggest challenge for you to have that picture set in stone, you know what that feels like, but then to communicate it to young guys coming into this franchise? Um, because you're fighting against forces that, you know, are kind of undefeated, right? Like maturity, um, experience. Um, some of these things just take time and you can't, there's no like secret pill or antidote or cheat code to stumble in and fail. You have to fail. We failed miserably before we won a championship. We got swept two years in a row before we won a championship. And sometimes you got to go through that. You try to skip those steps as best as possible, but um, it's hard to uh, fast track that. And you can t tell people, you know, till you're blue in the face what, what's going to happen, but, you know, they still have to go through it and see it. I mean, I don't want to look too far ahead, but do you have a sense of confidence that this group can just be a whole different type of beast, and especially when you look at the East, which is wide open when the postseason comes? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at our top six, seven, eight, like, uh, I think that we have a pretty good chance in a, in a playoff series. and. Um, when we're at our best, we have a really good chance. And so that's all you ask for is to have a chance. Um, you know, everybody stay healthy. Uh, all of our core guys play a ton of minutes together, uh, which, which can be beneficial for us going forward. Um, but again, just staying locked in on the day to day, not getting too carried away with thinking ahead because at the end of the day, coming into the season, the narrative was a lot different on us than it is now. And so, we can't really focus on narratives. We just got to focus on getting better every day. I mean, I remember media day, I had asked you because they had you guys all ranked all over the place. And you guys were, I think, like 26th in the league. And you're like, yeah, we're not paying attention to that. That belief to just not pay attention to the noise, where does that come from for you? Um, I think we uh, you got to look at the roster. Like, how many of these guys were favorites or, you know, pedigree type guys from day one? Not many, you know what I mean? And um, even that you can always find chips to look for to put on your shoulder for everybody. So I think if you go through the entire roster, each guy has something to prove and coming into the season with a, with a franchise that has built some history and some legacy over the last couple of years, especially winning the championship, I think there's expectations that we're chasing. And I think that's a good thing to have for a young team is the, the level of expectation is really high around here. This story is for the hustlers. This is for the people who are not afraid to get outside their comfort zone. This is for the people who bet on themselves and are willing to take that risk. I never wanted to be the biggest or the best. Like, I just want to be the realest. To know that you were sitting on this for your journey and at a time where I feel like a lot of people would say they're most vulnerable. You're waiting for the call. Where are you going to sign? Where are you going to lock up? Um, what does it feel like now for it to be out? Um, this feels good for people to see some of the behind the scenes and just to see more 
Um, I think with my uh, personality, the way I share things, um, whether that's via social media or whatever, um, I'm not that engaging with the fans. So I think it's a good opportunity for people who are supportive of me that follow my journey to kind of get a peek behind the curtain a little bit and see some of the conversations and, and some of the moments that uh, I've had that I didn't share. I mean, not to give it away, but I think what's so beautiful is the multiple parts throughout it where you do decide to show you're crying. I definitely cry. Like, I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm not too proud to, to say that. The crazy part is I cry every time I watch the, the documentary, so uh, it, must be, it must be okay. It must be good. Yeah, no, it is really good. And I like that you kind of peel back the layers and the nuance of losing a father, but also gaining a father as well. Why was that so important for you to share that kind of story? Um, well, the whole purpose of it is just to share in hopes that, you know, maybe somebody can find some hope or some inspiration or um, some type of comfort in this. And I found that sharing my story not only helps me heal, but it also can help somebody else. And lastly, for yourself, I mean, it's been, sure, you're not someone to talk about yourself specifically, but I think we could give ourselves some love here. Yeah. Um, to think about just how far you've come, just in the season alone, but just through your career, uh, what comes to mind? Um, I'm just proud. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of, you know, because, uh, again, it's hard to, like, tell people what they haven't seen, right? So I know all of the stuff that people haven't seen. You guys just see what you see. And so some of the moments that I've had and some of the things I've had to endure and go through, um, I'm just proud of myself for like staying true to who I am. And, um, you know, I'm sure you can find somebody who probably thinks I'm a jerk somewhere along the line, but I've done most people right. Um, try to do it the right way, standing on the principles that I believe in and, um, you know, staying humble. And, you know, again, this is, for me, like I'm in year six, you know what I mean? And I get this tag of being an old man and all of these things because of how I came in, but uh, I still feel like I got a long way to go. Feeling long, young, but they treat you like an OG. Absolutely. That Drake line was just for you. Yeah, Congratulations, for sure. friend. Thank you so much. Thank you.